Hi all, my name is Fani, working as Senior Data Cloud Architect at Snowflake. The quick start is built around the call center analytics use case. As you can see from this deck, we have audio files specific to the uh, vehicle insurance subvertical. And with the help of Whisper model running in Snowpark Container Services, we are able to extract the text from these audio files. Apart from text, we even extract the duration of the audio files and load that information in Snowflake. Now with the help of Cortex LLM function, on the raw audio text, we are able to generate various outcomes, be it agents, efficiency KPI, call diarization, call intent, customer sentiment analysis, to name a few. Now let's look into the solution architecture. As a first step, we extract the, uh, the text from the audio file using the Whisper model, which is running inside Snowpark Container Services. Once we extract the text as well as the duration from the audio file, then we uh, load that information inside Snowflake tables. Now with the help of Snowpark, we add a custom prompt to the audio text. Later, with the help of Cortex LLM function, using the audio text with the custom prompt, we are able to extract various information from the audio text, be it call intent, the issue, the customer name, the agent name, and various information that are very specific to this use case. Later, we store that particular uh, output with the structured output that we have generated and we create embeddings for those particular uh, uh, those particular rows and store it inside Snowflake as vector types. The solution offers two different chatbots. One is the rag based chatbot, which uses the vector embedding that we have uh, that we have created. And second one is the text to SQL. The text to SQL interface would allow any supervisor or any business user to pass a natural language question. And then with the help of large language model, which is hosted in Snowpark Container Services, we are able to generate a SQL and execute the SQL on the behalf of the user. The second kind of chatbot is rag based chatbot where the responses are contextual. So since we are storing the embeddings of the output that we are generating, any question that the user is asking, it's giving the answer in context to the data that we have stored in Snowflake tables, which is extracted from those raw audio files. The UI for this particular application is built using Streamlit. There are multiple pages. One is for audio analytics. Second is chatbot, specifically rag based chatbot. And third is text to SQL, where user can pass in their questions. You get answers, either contextual uh, responses, whether it's a rag based chatbot, or if it's text to SQL, you get analytical responses based upon the uh, chatbot experience, what you need. So if you want to look into the different steps to build this particular demo, these, these can be broken down into five steps. First is transcribe. Uh, using whisper model running inside snowpark container services you are able to get the duration and the uh, text for the audio files second is extracting the call details in structured format so using cortex llm functions we are able to extract the required information we extract the call diarization rization in terms of what the agent is speaking and what the customer is speaking now using the vector embedding on the structured call center we are able to provide the rag based chatbot experience and this is using the vector uh, cortex vector search uh, later, we, we are fine-tuning the, uh, the large language model specific for text to SQL, and this is using the number station um, large language model that we are hosting in Snowpark Container Services. And, and the last is the Streamlit, which is the UI for the entire application. Now let's uh, look into the uh, demo for this particular solution. After creating uh, the services and creating uh, various objects for required for this demo, this is the this is the home page for the Streamlit app. The first page talks about what this app is, and when you look go through the audio analytics, you pretty much get various various details. So first one is since we are storing the uh, the call duration, you get to see what are the total calls, what is the call duration. Uh, some of the other metrics that you get to see is what are the unique summary topics. These are coming from just the raw text and the call intent. What are the different call intents? As you can see, po policy inquiry, assistance, discuss settlement. All these are something that we are extracting from the raw audio text using uh, Cortex LLM function. Uh, there could be other other types of information or other visualizations what we have created, be it like what are the total calls by update mode, whether it's a first call resolution or not. Now, this is, uh, this is one of the uh, interesting uh, information that you can extract from the audio files. So I would pick a specific audio file in this case, audio file 55, which is wave, and we have combination of wave and MP3. 
I'll do uh, summarize or uh, summarize audio. It's going to tell me what this audio is about. Next, I go ahead and get the information about the details, audio details. So it gives me information about who is the rep, what is the customer name, what is the call sentiment, um, and further details in terms of what is the call intents and, and other details that we have captured. Now, since this particular audio has details about the claim number, uh, with the help of the transactional data that we have loaded in Snowflake specific to claims and policy, even we can uh, get the information about the claim and more importantly, the policy that this claim is tied to. Uh, the other uh, page for this particular app is going to be on on uh, sentiment count uh, as well as the agent uh, as well as the uh, agent information specific to the duration. As you can see, this talks about how much time an agent has spent, what is the call duration, and what is the sentiment in terms of year on year, month on month. Uh, how, what is the sentiment count that we get to see? Now uh, here comes the uh, important uh, chatbot experience. So this is this is the chatbot that uses the uh, the uh, RAG approach. As you can see, we are asking a specific question: whether do you rate a conversation happened on a specific date as a first call resolution or not? So this, as a supervisor, if he's interested to see whether it's a first call resolution or not, he can pretty much type that question in this chatbot and he clearly gets that output. So it says yes, and it gives you the reason why this particular uh, conversation is marked as a first call resolution. Um, another thing, if I want to track why is this specific conversation had a negative sentiment. So I can always go back and, and ask the chatbot to give me the reason why is this sentiment marked as negative. So it's going to give you information based upon the context and based upon the conversation a customer had with an agent and gives you the reason why the sentiment was either positive or negative. So you can get contextual responses. Uh, this is using our vector embedding and, and you, with the help of vector search, we are able to identify the embeddings which are very closer to the question. And then we are passing the information about our question, the text with the, with the, uh, with the embeddings what we have, which goes to an input to the LLM and extract the information what we need. Last is the text to SQL experience. This is where I'm tracking information about, uh, give me, this is, uh, this is useful when you're building um, analytical uh, chatbots, right? So you want to know, give me count of records for every, every resolution. So it, it goes to the, uh, it goes to the uh, large language model, which is running in Snowpark container services, uh, gets the SQL text, executes the SQL text in Snowflake and gives you the outputs. All of this is happening natively inside Snowflake without your data moving out, not making calls to any open AI. So similarly, you can run other queries, uh, be, be it what are the, uh, what is the sum of call duration for every representative and every solution. So I want to track uh, the, the details about uh, for all the representative. So based on this, it's going to give you some information. So this is a representative and it's going to give you information about what is the duration for it. And, and more importantly, we can build uh, if you want to track details like um, issues, list of issues handled by a single rep. Uh, if I want to track that information, I can easily easily get that information as well. So in this scenario, I'm saying, give me the issues handled by a specific rep whose name starts with Emma and for the two months of which are November and December uh, in the year 2023. As you can see, it, it says a representative like Emma and date time between uh, so and so. So we have even used Cortex functions on top of the uh, SQL queries generated by the large language models to correct certain operators. In this case, since um, the I like is appropriate for case insens insensitivity. So we have asked uh, the Cortex LLM to correct these queries wherever you find like because we want our predicate clause or search to be case insensitive. So we are asking Cortex LLM function to correct such kind of queries and look at these operators and update accordingly. So this is pretty much uh, what the what the demo is. And now we'll go back to uh, to the quick start and look at how do, how can you spin up this particular demo at your own uh, in your accounts and and run through through this particular app. OK, so this is the quick start for this particular demo. As you can see, it has an overview solution. Uh, what are the what are the pages and uh, different um, <clears throat> sections within the app? 
some familiarity you need to know docker uh, git repo uh, and uh, basically everything that we just seen in the demo is what you learn uh, one important thing to remember is uh, you need to ensure you are using the account where the cortex llm is currently available today and more importantly work with your um, account team to enable the uh, vector search because that feature is still in private preview you have to enable it for your account so that you can use the drag based experience and and the other capabilities without that when you're running through the notebooks you will you will hit errors because that particular feature is not enabled uh, in your accounts now if i look into the uh, setup uh it's basically broken down into three different steps this is the this is the git uh which uh, which has the details as you can see from here uh we'll uh, go through go through that git and show you what what it is so this is the git which has your entire which has a repo for this entire solution and uh, we'll we'll uh, go through each of the notebooks that's been used so the three big steps is running the whisper model uh hosting the uh the llm model which is from number station for text to sql and third one is running the streamlit app in containers so first step is nothing but transcribe audio file so here you have two steps first step is this demonstrate how do you host a whisper model how can you do the transcript but for this demo we have given you some sample files through which you get an experience and you learn how do you do a uh, transcribe of the audio files and and pretty much load that in snowflake and apart from that we have loaded a lot of these conversations uh, the raw conversations in a csv file and you can pretty much load that into your raw tables and go through the remaining remaining steps so in the a step uh, when you click on this particular notebook it has steps in terms of building a docker image uploading the docker image to the container to the image repository and pretty much running through the other steps so it creates a service function it gives you the experience it's good if you want to learn but uh, for the for the demo you can skip this step and directly go to step b where it's taking the audio files which are loaded in the csv files and then pretty much can run through run through the exercise so anything that you see in the markdown you have to run it in your snow site so it's creating a role Uh, granting various permissions creating a warehouse so as you can see we are creating a table called as all um, all claims from and we are uploading the sample audio underscore text dot csv to a stage and once once this is done all we do is uh, we are just loading the uh, csv data into the tables and this is the output what you get to see one thing to remember if you if you don't get to see the the stage files you you have all those steps created as part of the other notebook so if you go back to your uh, to to the quick start and click on the first notebook it has the steps to create even even the required stages so as you could see this is the step where we are creating uh, details this is uh, the same set of similar information that you have seen in the other notebook but um, other permissions and few other objects which are required since because we are uploading uploading the uh, image in the scenario but coming back to the stage is what we need this is where we create uh, different stages uh, which are uh, required uh, uh, for this demo right so in this case if you really want to run the container uh, do the transcribe and see how it exactly works you can you can go through the steps mentioned in this particular notebook so uh, once you once you create the compute pool um and you create the other objects which are mentioned uh, you are good to go ahead with the remaining steps ensure that wherever we are calling account admin you are running those steps uh, using the account admin and and all, everything that you see in this markdown has to be executed in snow site if it, you get to see the steps inside the cell you can pretty much execute it directly from this particular uh, jupiter notebook so here we are creating the internal stage um and then we are creating the whisper service uh, which is pointing to the yaml file uh, what we have created and uploaded so this yaml file has details about where your uh, image repository is and what what is the image so uh, once once you upload uh, all those details you can check the status of the service and uh, if even that helps you to look into the logs if there are any specific errors uh the next step is nothing but creating the uh, service function this is important step because we are hitting the end point for the api which is running inside your container 
as you can see there are three different endpoints one is audio duration asr and detect language so we are creating three different uh, functions uh, so it's the same table what we have we created in the other notebook but in this case we are just loading it from from the audio files directly but the audio is not similar to the audio transcript audio transcripts that you get to see in the csv file so csv file is appropriate for the entire demo to work but if you have any audio file and you want to see how exactly the transcription works and you want to make use of this capability and feature within snowflake uh, this is this is a good option for you to explore and start looking into so in this case uh, we are again uploading the csv file uh, as you can see all the audio files what we have we are uploading the audio files in this particular folder and this is the list of audio files there are some mp3 files uh, and and few other files that we have uploaded to the audio file stage and then what we are doing is we are inserting into the raw table as you can see we are uh, fetching all the audio files from the audio files stage internal stage and we are calling the three functions which is nothing but the duration transcribe and detect and detect we are not really using but we are only using the other two service functions which are nothing but the transcribe and duration so this will load the required information into the raw table even in this particular lab we have specified uh, since we don't have the real transcripts uh, you can again read the same audio file audio underscore text.csv and pretty much uh, load that information rewrite that information in all claims underscore raw and this is the output that you get to see so even in this in this particular notebook the last step is something uh, where we are reading the csv file which has the transcripts which will be used for for this particular app and the demo and you can load that information from the csv file to the uh, to to snowflake tables now going back to the quick start uh, the second one is uh, setting up text to sql this is again using the large language model to give you the experience of text to sql chat bond if you want to skip this step you can go ahead and skip that the only feature which will not be working in from your streamlet app but the other capabilities will will work without any issues so if you want to run through these steps you can click this particular notebook and go through the steps which is uh, which has been called out in this notebook so it would uh, you would have steps to build a docker image push the docker image uh, create other objects uh, that we have mentioned over here and the service function and what not so it talks about uh, so once you have uh, created the uh, service you need to access the jupyter lab endpoint the steps is something that is mentioned over here so you have access to to the jupyter lab once you create the service so once you launch the jupyter lab there are two files that you need to run so one is the uh, sh file which you get to see in in the same same repo as you could see there is a file uh, with with the specific name uh, which is nothing but download underscore uh, model dot sh now this is something that you get to see over here this actually downloads the model from hugging face uh, to uh, to a stage that you have created um, in snowflake next is running through this particular model in this scenario we are fine tuning the large language model with our own data set to demonstrate the capabilities of how you could fine tune the model inside snowpark container services uh, using your own custom data set so all you have to do is just go through this particular uh, this particular notebook step by step which is which is mentioned over here so as you can see this is the fine tune model dot uh, ipynb and run through run through these steps it it uh, talks you it it goes through the step in terms of how do you fine tune a model um, how do you load it and uh, in this case we are just using from pre train because we are downloading the model to a specific location which is a mount point so we are directly reading the uh, the uh, the uh, large language model from this location it goes through the step of how do you uh, fine tune the model um, and and details around it so it's saving merging with pef layers and uh, it even helps you to you know uh, get the output call call that particular uh, function and pretty much see the how the output looks like so once you have gone through all all these steps uh, then the last step is running the uh, web service in this case it's because we are want to expose this model as an endpoint so the last step is pretty much running this run fast dot ss so open a terminal in your jupyter lab itself and you would see a file with this name as you can see over here run fast api.sh uh, that is pretty much since 
we are copying all this file to the container you would see all of this information inside your container so once you access and open up the jupyter lab pretty much these are all the files that would be seen from jupyter uh, jupyter lab as well so open a terminal uh, in the jupyter lab and run run uh, this particular shell script and which which pretty much exposes your uh, large language model as an endpoint as a rest api endpoint and the last step is nothing but creating the service function which is text to sql is the name what we have given and it's pointing to the service what we have created hitting an endpoint again which has the name of text to sql to invoke that you can just call a sql function uh, select text to sql what is a distinct purpose and and whatever the question uh, you want to ask so this will this will uh, complete that particular uh, section of of the quick start where you are able to uh, host your custom model and expose that model as as a, a endpoint and use the endpoint as a service function inside snowflake so the last step for this particular quick start is creating the streamlet app uh, all you have to do is go through the uh, notebook so it has steps in terms of how do you run this streamlet app as a how do you run the streamlet app in snowpark containers so it has the steps go to this folder uh, you can open up your terminal and run through these steps uh, docker image docker push uh, ensure that you update the details about what is your org name your database name and schema name after which you are able to build so this this docker file is all the details uh, it has got what files are getting copied and everything uh, this you can run it from terminal or you can just run a bash and pretty much run it uh, from from the notebook but ensure that you update the details of org account name image repository schema and database name so once you have uh, created push the image to uh, uh, snowpark image registry you have you can continue with the other steps so as you can see this uses account admin role uh, and and execute these steps which is nothing but creating a compute pool it's a cpu compute pool and granting permissions as well as creating uh, network roles and external uh, access integration so once these steps are completed you can come back to this notebook as you need to execute these steps uh, from uh, from this snow site now what we are doing is we are uploading the yaml files which are spec and then we are creating a uh, a service uh, service over here snowpark service and uh, which pretty much uh, creates uh, creates the container for you and uh, you can check the status of the container look into the logs and you can access the endpoint by running this particular cell it gives you an endpoint and once you hit the endpoint the streamlet app pops up and uh, you can go through different sections of the app and you have the uh, demo up and running uh, going back to the quick start yes this is the screen what you get to see and after which uh, you'll be able to demonstrate everything that we have seen as part of the demo so you have conclude the conclusion and resources you get to see what we have learned uh, which are already discussed and some of the resources uh, that's accessible you can go and always look for other resources which are available with that we have concluded uh, this this entire demo we've gone through the steps needed for you to bring up this demo at your end by following this quick start thank you all